Are you looking at buying a new MacBook? Or maybe you already have an M1 MacBook Air and want to see how the new M2 MacBook Air stacks up against it. Well, in this ultimate comparison video, I'm going to be comparing the two in everything from pricing, form factor, ports, battery life, how hot they get, and some performance differences, including coding, creative workflows, video editing, 3D, gaming, and more. Okay, so let's not waste any time and get straight into it. Let's start with the most important factor, which is, of course, pricing. As you already know, there is a 200 US dollar price difference between the two models. And on paper, it looks like the M2 Air is the better buy. More features, more performance, new design. But what I don't often hear mentioned is just how cheap you can get an M1 MacBook Air these days. This is because the M1 Air has been out for two years at this point and is now technically outdated by the redesigned M2 Air. This means there's a ton of M1 Air stock on the second-hand market, and you can pick up a lightly used M1 Air for anywhere from 600 to 800 US dollars right now, or $850 for a refurbished model directly from Apple themselves, which, as I've said in the past, is as good as a brand new one. And as time goes on and Apple tries to completely phase out the M1 MacBook Air with the new M2 MacBook Air, I think we'll see additional massive discounts on resellers such as Amazon and also Best Buy. So what might initially seem like a $200 price difference, in reality is more like $400 to $600. And the question to ask yourself throughout this video is, are the extra features and performance on the new M2 MacBook Air really worth up to 50% more cost compared to the M1? Moving on to physical differences, both MacBooks have an almost identical footprint. Although the M2 is just slightly less thick, which might not be obvious at first glance due to the rounded bottom chassis of the M1. Speaking of that rounded chassis, you might find it more comfortable to type on the M1 versus the M2, where your wrists might dig into that hard edge. In terms of weight, the M2 is just barely lighter than the M1, so you almost certainly won't notice a difference. I also strongly recommend reconsidering the midnight color because although it looks really nice, it does scratch and smudge very easily. Starlight is quite nice or you can't go wrong with either space gray or silver. Now, although both devices are a 13 inch footprint, the screen is actually slightly larger on the M2 due to the smaller bezels. The panel technology and color accuracy though is essentially identical between the two. Despite Apple using fancy marketing terms like Liquid Retina, which is basically just the same LCD screen as the M1, but with rounded corners and a notch. Yes, the notch, love it or hate it. One noticeable difference, however, is that the M2's screen can get 25% brighter at 500 nits versus just 400 for the M1. So if you spend a lot of time outside in the sun or in environments with a lot of glare, you definitely will notice this. You also get a 1080p webcam on the M2 MacBook Air versus 720p on the M1. A welcome update, but certainly not a game changer. The audio is also better on the M2 with a four speaker sound system and support for spatial audio. Here's an example of the four speaker sound system on the M2 versus the M1's stereo speakers. Moving on, the trackpad on the M2 is slightly wider than the M1's. And moving on to the keyboard, you can immediately see the larger function keys on the M2. But in terms of overall typing experience, I think most people will enjoy the M2 a little bit better because of the more tactile response versus the slightly more mushy keys of the M1. Although at the end of the day, there's really not much difference at all between these keyboards. Moving on to ports, they're very similar between the two. On the right hand side, you get the standard 3.5 millimeter audio jack. However, on the M2, you also get built-in support for high impedance headphones for any audio files out there. On the left-hand side, both MacBooks have two Thunderbolt slash USB 4 ports. But one thing to note is that you can only output to one external monitor. And this is the same on both M1 and M2 Airs. So that might be a deal breaker to some. You'll also notice the M2 Air has a MagSafe charging port. And yes, it comes with a color matched cable. 
This is great because it frees up a Thunderbolt port and gives you access to the fast charge feature, allowing you to charge to 50% in just 30 minutes, but only if you buy the 67 watt charger at additional cost. Looking on the inside, you can see that the M2 MacBook Air is using a slightly different thermal system. With thermal material across the entire logic board to transfer heat away from the M2 chip versus the M1, which has a metal heat sink over the chip instead. And no, you can't replace the RAM or SSD on either machine, it's all soldered or glued down. Also, in case you didn't already know, we are doing a giveaway on this channel. We're giving away either an M1 MacBook Air or a 1000 US dollar Apple gift card. All you have to do is subscribe using that button down below and make sure you check out the description for more details. Okay, let's move on to the performance differences between these two devices. Now, just bear in mind here that you do need to take the target market of the MacBook Air lineup into consideration. Most people won't be doing anything too intensive, and if they are, it will likely be in short bursts. So that is what I'm gonna concentrate on in this video. Let's start with the differences between the M1 and M2 chips themselves. When looking at the base models, which is what I'm featuring in this video, Honestly, there's not that much difference. You get the same CPU cores, four efficiency and four performance for a total of eight, although the CPU cores on the M2 are slightly more powerful. You also get one extra GPU core on the M2, and again, they're slightly more powerful. And double the memory bandwidth and an extra media engine adding ProRes to the existing support for H.264 and HEVC we saw introduced with the M1. Now, one thing to bear in mind is you do get some additional upgrade options on the M2 that you do not get on the M1. For example, you have the option to upgrade the GPU cores from eight to 10 on the M2 versus seven to eight on the M1. And you can also go up to 24 gigabytes of RAM on the M2. And you also get a couple more color options and also charger options when purchasing on the Apple website. But apart from that, I mean, yeah, these things are pretty much identical. And let's be honest, most people won't be pushing this machine hard enough to notice any performance differences anyway. I mean, the majority of MacBook Air users simply browse the internet and read emails. However, there are a lot of popular workflows on this machine that are a little bit more complicated than that. So let's see how they compare. Let's start with the CPU and look at some coding and development. Despite the improvements to the M2 CPU cores, this only translates into about a 15% improvement over the M1. Or for single core workflows, almost no difference. And in real life usage, we see the same minimal differences, around 10 to 12% depending on the task. Even for a lengthy 20 minute code compilation, you're just not gonna be seeing a big boost on the M2. So for all of you developers and coders out there, I don't think it really matters which one you go for. You're not gonna see that much improvement on the M2. Moving on to creative workflows and we can nitpick benchmark numbers all day long, but again, there's essentially no difference at all between the M2 Air and the M1 Air, typically only about 10% in most cases, except possibly for Lightroom exports, but even then, you spend 99% of your time actually editing the photos and not exporting them. However, if you do any kind of light video editing, which yes, is entirely possible, even on an entry-level MacBook Air, the edge does go to the M2 because of the aforementioned ProRes support. You'll mostly notice this during actual timeline editing when scrubbing or doing live playback, for example. The M2 will be smoother and more responsive, but again, only if there's ProRes footage being used. Rendering is a similar story. If it's just ProRes, yeah, the M2 is significantly quicker. Although for timelines containing a mixture of codecs, including one ProRes footage stream, the difference is much less. So if you don't use a lot of ProRes footage or you don't even know what ProRes is, both machines will perform almost exactly. Moving on to 3D workflows, navigating around the viewport and actually creating 3D models on Blender was pretty much the exact same on both devices. Same with any short renders involving the CPU. You're only gonna see a significant improvement in GPU intensive tasks. 
For example, when rendering the barbershop scene in Blender, the M2 Air finished nearly nine minutes faster than the M1. Now, I don't know how much 3D rendering you're gonna be doing on a fanless MacBook Air, but I do know there are some of you out there at school or university or just getting into Blender as a hobby on the side. Now, if that's the case, again, you really won't notice that much of a difference, but when it does come to rendering, the M2 is gonna pull ahead. Let's also have a quick chat about gaming, which again, is actually a pretty popular activity on these devices, despite the lack of a fan. On paper and for short bursts, the M2 is about 25% faster. But once the chassis and M2 chip has heated up, the performance difference is more like five to 10%, as you can see in this Tomb Raider benchmark. Now, this performance difference can be explained by how much heat the M1 and M2 chips produce. The M1 runs cooler, peaking at around 95 degrees Celsius during CPU intensive tasks versus a whopping 100 plus degrees for the M2. This helps explain why in some GPU intensive tasks, both devices perform very similarly. Even though it is more powerful, the M2 simply runs warmer and thermal throttles slightly more. And this also translates into a warmer chassis. The M1 MacBook Air is typically about four degrees cooler than the M2 MacBook Air when doing intensive tasks. And it's the same story if you wanna keep either machine on your lap while playing a game or rendering something. Although to be fair, you likely won't be doing anything too intensive on this machine where it heats up to those temperatures, or at least not frequently. So this probably doesn't even really matter to you. That being said, if you wanna see a full video on the thermals and just how hot this particular machine gets, I will link a separate video I made on that topic down below. Moving on, I thought I'd also mention the internal SSD speeds because there is a huge difference between the two, but only with the 256 gigabyte M2 Air base model. Long story short, the 256 gigabyte SSD on the M2 Air is 50% slower than the M1s. Now you may not notice this difference, but in some cases you definitely will. And again, I made a full in-depth video on this topic if you want to learn more. So I will link that in the description below. But just bear in mind here, if you're planning on upgrading the base model 256 gigabyte SSD to the 512 gigabyte option for the M2 Air, this issue won't apply to you. Moving on to the battery, Apple claims both MacBooks have roughly the same battery where you'll get about 15 hours of wireless web browsing. I found in real life with a mixture of everyday tasks, you'll get closer to about 12 hours. And honestly, I think when it comes to laptops and battery life, once you get past about 10 hours, it doesn't really matter anyway because that's more than a full day of work. Okay, so how about just normal day-to-day -day usage? Well, to be quite honest, they both accomplish the exact same task, and that is being a lightweight, portable laptop with great battery life. Honestly, if you have the money, go for the M2 Air. The screen is really nice, it is thinner, and you'll get that small performance boost, and the extra features like MagSafe are really nice. Just bear in mind, again, that slower SSD on the M2 256 gigabyte base model. But if you're on a budget and you don't mind going for a lightly used secondhand M1 MacBook Air, I definitely think that is the way to go for a lot of people watching this video. You'll get basically everything good about the Apple Silicon Air platform and only miss out on things you likely won't notice that much anyway. So yeah, honestly, I think both of these laptops are incredible devices. Yes, the M1 MacBook Air, I think, is the tried and trusted companion for a lot of people out there and will continue to be for probably the next five to 10 years. But I also think the M2 MacBook Air, although it's maybe not a significant upgrade and only has a couple more nice features for that extra price tag, that's still a really decent option as well if you can afford it. But apart from that, guys, thanks for watching this video and I'll catch you in the next one.